is Hakel, and in this video, I'm going to present how to use Pi SDK and authenticate users, and how you can run your app in the sandbox environment for development purpose. Keep in mind that Pi apps are web apps that are loaded in the environment, which enables them to interact with the resources offered by the Pi apps platform. For that purpose, you need to install a piece of JavaScript called the Client SDK in your app. Since Pi apps are primarily web apps, you can debug them in the desktop browser using the sandbox environment. We are going to use this simple single page application called Pi Online Bakery. It is initialized with create react app, but you can still create your demo app with barebone HTML and JavaScript. To use Pi SDK, you need to add SDK script tag to your front end. Then you need to call the init function to initialize the SDK. You need to specify the version to ensure compatibility with future SDK releases. As of now, the version 2.0 is the latest, so we put 2.0 here. And sandbox flag to be true, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. This sandbox flag is an optional and lets you configure the SDK to run in the sandbox. It's handy if you control this variable with the environment variable, but to be explicit, I'm setting it to true here. Let's go to the developer portal. I'm assuming you have registered your app on the portal as I did here. To load your app in the sandbox, you need to set the development URL. Right now it says not configured, so let's edit this. This will typically be localhost with a custom port, which depends on your development environment. Here I'm using localhost with 3003 port. Once you set the development URL, a sandbox URL is generated. Open this URL in the desktop browser, and you'll see this white page with authorization code. If you are running PyNode, you are probably familiar with this process. Open your mobile app and tap on the authorized sandbox link at the bottom of Pi Utilities page. And you need to type the authorization code and press confirm. When your sandbox environment is authorized, you'll see your app within the sandbox environment, which is the page you saw earlier. Now open the dev tool of the browser. There is a small context selector here. You can select localhost to get your app's context. After you select localhost, if you type pi in the console, you can access it. Of course, you'll see some values to be null because the current user is not authenticated yet. Now that we can run our app with the sandbox, let's take a look at the SDK shortly. The very first function you'll encounter is authenticate function. It takes an array of string called scopes and one callback function called on incomplete payment found. There are two available scopes, which are username and payments. For now, the scopes feature is still work in progress. What that means is the authenticate function will consider both scopes are requested for now. Nonetheless, you should implement your app with only relevant scopes. Check our SDK reference hosted on our GitHub repository for future updates. On incomplete payment found function handles an incomplete payment between your app and this user you're authenticating. A payment is considered incomplete when you don't submit the server-side completion API call. In this demo app, we're proposing an example usage where the payment is sent to the app server to find the previous order and mark it as paid. More details about payment is available in the payment video. For now, let's just keep in mind that we need to pass a callback function that handles the incomplete payment from the server side. The authenticate function will return a promise, which looks something like this. The return value might change later, but what's important is that you need to make sure to send it to the app server and store this information in your database. It's also important to verify this by hitting slash me endpoint from your server. 
because malicious users can pretend they're someone else. You can find more about the slash me endpoint on our Pi platform documentation. So in this video, we have seen how to use the SDK, run your app in the sandbox, and authenticate the current user. In the next video, I'm going to cover how to process payments, which are wrappers around the blockchain transaction between your app and users. Thanks for watching.